Thank you. So good morning and welcome to Elm Hall Drive Methodist Church. So a couple of notices this morning. As usual, we've got bread on the side. Please feel free to take some. We've got toilets at the back. A couple of things to note. We've got a prayer meeting here next week after the service. If anybody would like to attend, that will be just after a brief pause for tea and coffee. And then please join us for prayers after. We're going to be doing some more harvest singing on Sunday the 13th of October. Singing in Fullwood Court and then Gorselands. And just before we start our service, I would just like to ask everybody, please give a big congratulations to Johan and Hannah that have announced their engagement this morning. Thank you very much and well done to both of you. So I will start us off with our leading the church into growth prayer. If everybody would like to please join in with me. It will be on the screen in a moment. So let's pray. God of mission, who alone brings growth to your church, send your Holy Spirit to give vision to our planning, wisdom to our actions, joy to our worship, and power to our witness. Help our church to grow in numbers in spiritual commitment to you, and in service to our local community. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now I'm going to hand you over to John, who's going to be preaching for us today. This is great. Creator God, Make us and shape us. You provide for all our needs as you guide our paths. Help us to live our best lives for you, bringing your peace to our world. May we be like Jesus in how we live alongside others, and so draw nearer to you. wisdom and peace. We come to you in worship and prayer, seeking your, guide <coughs> seeking your guidance and grace. We thank you for your word which teaches us how to live in harmony with you and with one another. We ask that you would make us wise and understanding, gentle and humble, pure and peaceable. In Jesus' name we pray. Sing our first hymn, God is here as we, his people, meet to offer prayer and praise.
process. God of mercy and forgiveness, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, in word, and in deed. We have been envious and selfish, boastful and false, quarrelsome and bad. We have hurt others and ourselves and dishonored you. Forgive us, O oh God, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Restore to us the joy of your salvation and renew a right spirit within us. Amen. God of grace and love, thank you for your forgiveness freely given through the cross of Christ. Thank you that you do not reject us in our weakness, but welcome us in your mercy. Amen. For the blessing and joy, thank you for your gifts, which are more than we can ask or imagine. Thank you for the gift of life, which is precious and sacred. Thank you for the gift of faith, which is a light in the dark. Thank you for the gift of hope, which is an anchor for the soul. Thank you for the gift of love, which is the greatest of all. Thank you for your gift of Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and our friend. Amen. And we take our first reading from St. Mark's Gospel. The first reading is from Mark 9, verses 30 to 37. Jesus predicts his death a second time. Jesus did not know where they were because he was teaching his disciples. He said to them, going to be That's where you And we sing the hymn, A New Commandment I Give Unto You. Can we sing it twice? Will it work quick on time? You can sing it twice. It's a bit
The reading is from James. <laughs> Two kinds of wisdom. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic, From where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. So what causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? You desire, but do not have, so you kill. You covet, but you cannot get what you want, so you quarrel and fight. But do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives, that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come near to God and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded.
The passage we heard from James speaks of a society which is broken, selfish, jealous, violent. If we look at our own society today, we can sometimes feel that it is in the same state. And I think while in many ways that has always been the case, um, I feel that over the last few months this has become more and more the position we have war in various parts of the world. Um, I know there are wars taking place in the world all over the place anyway, but we've been much more conscious of war in Ukraine and in Israel and its surrounding neighbors. And then violence and fighting nearer at hand. If we were to, if a year ago, say, I had asked you which township around Merseyside was least, li least likely to be violent was the most, most settled and established, I think some of us might well have chosen Southport. And certainly it came as an enormous surprise to see Southport as a center of violence and uh, mob, mob violence and so on, almost first in the country. We thought of Southport as a, perhaps a rather smart town with good shopping streets, well, a good shopping street, and the town hall and the art gallery and shops and cafes and so on. Indeed, some of the residents of Football Court used to go up, up to Southport for a day out quite regularly. Um, you do it very free, cheaply, of course, with the bus pass and the rail pass, and uh, they didn't eat spend very much, but they'd have a cup of tea and so on, and, and have a very jolly day. And, you know, that was our, our image of Southport. Perhaps we got it wrong. Um, perhaps the violence that took place was not just people from Southport, certainly it wasn't. Um, but, but the whole thing suddenly shakes you with the murder of three young girls followed by rioting and totally unjustified attacks on Muslims and on the mosque. And the way that the violence spread across the country, including here, of course, in Liverpool. And this violence has been part of a wider sense of unrest. There's been a there seems to have been a frightening number of knife attacks by young people on each other. Remember the murder of the young transgender girl in Warrington and racist attacks in a number of places. Of course, that's nothing new. Do um, you remember the right race riots in Liverpool in 1981? Remember, we were on holiday then and staying in a little 
back of Mike Cottage in Herefordshire. And we came back to Liverpool, and suddenly there was this enormous shock of driving down Smith Down Road and seeing all the shops were now boarded up, and there were police and soldiers on every corner. Looking more widely, we see these sorts of patterns in all parts of the world. The presidential election in uh, America doesn't show any promise of being peaceful and rational. And so often, violence is directed against people who are already fleeing from persecution in their own countries. But people don't take that into account, they just don't want them here. And this again, what is true of society, has in many times and places been true of the church. Um, in the Middle Ages, you regularly got mob violence against Jews from Christians. Um, and uh, there are examples, but on the other hand, there have also been examples where violence has not been the case and where religious groups have worked for peace. I was, it was very impressive the way the imam of one of the Liverpool mosques um, went out and confronted the rioters and gave them, I think, was he? Burgers. I can't quite remember what it was. I do remember he, he was giving them food. And, uh, and that broke the ice, in fact, and that people did start talking to him and have proper conversations. They ended up inviting people into the mosque and showing them around. And these things can be done. More generally, for a long time, of course, churches and similar bodies have been at the forefront of running food banks and warm places in cold weather and so on. We may be a problem or we may be a solution and we may need to make sure that it is the solution that we are. And this leads to the reading we've had from St. James. He's writing about relationships within the church, but also as it applies to wider society. So often people feel that they're missing out compared with other people and turn violent, as we've seen. And James spells it out. Where do these conflicts and disputes come from? He asks and he blames them on our, our envy, our ambitions. But wisdom from above, he says, is pure, peaceable, gentle, full of mercy. So that a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace. Now this may seem obvious um, and something you would take as for granted, but churches can be places of deep hostility themselves. Uh, when I was growing up in the 50s, we were in a, a father's ministry of a church in Lincolnshire, in a small, um, sizable town, where there were still ex Wesleyan and ex primitive churches, and they it's not too, far, too much to say they hated each other's guts. No, really. Um, yeah. And uh, eventually, I mean, long after that time, they decided they had, they had to unite the two churches into one. And the only way they could do it is by demolishing both churches and building a new one. They would still not set foot in the other. Um, and then in the 60s, I remember the way that uh, we tried to establish a scheme for union between the Church of England and the Methodist Church, but it failed from the business of people on the two fringes. I, felt, I myself felt very bitter about this at the time. But then over the years, Catholic-Protestant relationships, particularly in Liverpool, where things used to be so bad, have changed so much. And you may remember the way that 
Bishop David Shepherd and Archbishop Warlock, and indeed our own district chair, John Newton, got the churches working together. So that now they're, that sort of working together is taken for granted. And indeed, it was referred to as the Mercy Miracle. Perhaps not as much as we should, because we all feel slowed under with our own Methodist affairs at present, trying to sort of uh, sort things out. But the idea of working with other churches is now very much taken for granted. And so we could go on. The church has by no means got it right. And Christians have competed and fought with one another. But we can also be an example to society. Perhaps we might end with an extreme example. Francis Vassisi person who worked tirelessly and destroyed himself in bringing peace to one another and all honor to him, the Pope at the time, I forget who he was, but he was a very tough politician, but he also recognized the work of God and it was he who authorized Francis to set up his order of friars the most ex extreme example of the selfless love of God since Jesus himself. We all know that story, and this is still, I think, a, a very important image for us all, and we need to be reminded of it. So we sing our next hymn, which is attributed to St. Francis, Make Me a Channel of Your Peace. When I say help us to be peacemakers, the responses give us wisdom, 
mercy, and righteousness. Loving Lord, we commend to you those who are striving to make peace in Ukraine and in Israel, Palestine. Give them wisdom in their thinking, mercy in their action, and fairness in all that they do. We pray that the volatile situation between Israel and Lebanon will not escalate, but that a desire for peace will enter the hearts of those involved. We lift up to you all those who live in regions where there is conflict and unrest, and who are experiencing a living hell every day, those who have been injured, those who have lost loved ones. Fill them with your comfort and strength, we pray. We remember those caught up in the floods in Central Europe. Give them strength to cope with their suffering and rebuild their lives. Help us to be peacemakers. Give us wisdom, mercy, and righteousness. Gracious Saviour, we pray for those making political and economic policy in our own country. Guide them in difficult decisions. Give them wisdom in their thinking, mercy in their action, and fairness in all that they do. We pray for the health service and all who work in it serving those in the community. We pray for those who fear fuel poverty, for all who are dependent on food banks or struggling to make ends meet. Embrace each one with your comforting love. We pray for young people, those starting at university or college, or starting a new school or new school year. Help them to feel settled and happy. We pray for young adults making their way in life, seeking employment and a place to live. Be with those who are finding this difficult. Sustain them and fill them with hope. Help them to find the support they need. Help us to be peacemakers. Give us wisdom, mercy, and righteousness. Life-giving spirit, we pray for our church and the church throughout the world for all religious leaders and followers. Give them wisdom in their thinking, mercy in their action, and fairness in all that they do. Loving God, we ask for your guidance for the future of this church here at Elm Hall Drive. Guide us in the decisions we have to make and help us to see the future as you see it for this church. Bless the new district in the Northwest and those taking up posts within it. Bless our own South Liverpool circuit and give wisdom to those carrying responsibility. We pray for all congregations and communities of Christians. Give them a desire for unity, a passion for mission, and a yearning to make more followers of Christ. Help us to be peacemakers. Give us wisdom, mercy, and righteousness. 
trinity of love, joy, and peace. We pray for all with particular needs at this time, for those who are sick, for those who grieve, for those who are lonely, for those who are despondent. Touch them with your healing spirit of comfort, peace, and hope. We pray for those who offer counseling, medical care, pastoral support, and love. Give them strength, comfort, and compassion in all that they are and do. Help us to be peacemakers. Give us wisdom, mercy, and righteousness. May we show the wisdom that comes from heaven, pure, peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Make us peacemakers who sow in peace and reap a harvest of righteousness. In the name of Jesus, amen. We say together the prayer that Jesus gave us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Raise and 